Hey there, huge day today. We're putting the plastic on the nursery greenhouse. We've been building this thing for a while and today's the day we're gonna get the plastic on and we'll be able to start using it and that is amazing. So one thing I wanna talk about quickly is anytime that you're putting plastic on a caterpillar tunnel, a high tunnel, a nurse, a greenhouse, anything like that, make sure you have a friend or two or even more, the more hands the better to get it done, especially if you haven't done it before. You can get it done with two people for you know small to medium sized tunnels. And the biggest thing is make sure you pick a day that the wind is very light. Today it's very calm out here. I've put up plastic and you know some some wind and it's it's really, really challenging. So we should be good today. This is much smaller. Gene and I did uh, the 200 foot caterpillar tunnels from Farmer's Friend by ourselves. And you know one day was calm, one day was a little bit windy. So we should be okay with this. And again, it's just a reminder, we're gonna be doing the end walls first and then the roof is gonna be double walled. So we're gonna be putting two layers of plastic on the top with a blower motor to inflate that. So well, let's get to it. Got the panels for the end walls here cut and a couple of pointers here. There's an inside and an outside of the plastic and it's labeled to so make sure you put the side that says inside facing in. And another good tip is using a bunch of these spring clamps or just any kind of clamp really. Uh, these are just cheap and we have a bunch laying around to hold the plastic while you work, especially if you only have two people, or even if you're doing this by yourself, which I don't recommend, I like to have at least one person with me, but these are really helpful to just tack things along before you get to the wiggle wire or places where you just wanna hold it quickly. So these have been really helpful in getting the plastic up just as a temporary hold. Well, that went pretty smoothly. Really happy with the way it turned out, especially all the channel that we had on here. It really is holding the plastic on really tightly and went pretty smoothly, as I said. Lastly, what we have to do here is trim the top edge and we also have to cut out the holes for the uh, fans, but it's wiggle wired around all four sides. So it'll be nice and tight in there. And then leave a little bit of plastic on the bottom. There's a little bit of excess here and then we'll bury that in the ground and that creates that seal along the ground. So. We'll get to that later. I think we're gonna work on the other end next and then we'll see where that goes. All right, another end wall done, fantastic. And a couple things I wanna talk about here. One is, usually I use the crease of the, you know, where the plastic folds to figure out where the middle of the plastic is. But this one we had to rotate at 90 degrees. So we just had to measure where the middle was and then put a mark up top and it worked out pretty well. And another thing here is when you're doing this, you wanna start at the top and work your way down and kind of pulling it as you're putting the wiggle wire in so you get a nice tight fit. But yeah, went pretty well. And now I just gotta cut out the holes for the louvers the door and the fans on the other side, and then we can start working on the roof. Cut out all the holes for the louvers and fans and the door, and you can see the louver over here. Plastic's a little long, I haven't trimmed this part yet, but louver's here, so this will allow the air to come in. And also, because this is gonna have a double-walled roof, there's gonna be two sheets of plastic, this is the blower motor that's gonna inflate the space between the two pieces of plastic. So we have this mounted here uh, as per the instructions, and then once we get the first layer on, we're gonna put this little diffuser on here and that will uh, I guess keep the space between the plastic and allow the air to come out so that's what we're gonna do and uh, start putting on the plastic all right we cut the plastic for the double walled roof and this is a 24 foot tunnel so we cut them each 28 feet long and we've just started to pull them over and I don't know what the best strategy is here but I think this will work out at least I'll let you guys know or you'll see here so we pulled one layer up to close to the top as far as we could comfortably reach with the ladders and clamped it just using spring clamps up there and then got the second one started and clamped it in the same place. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna basically keep those edges together and just work it over the top. Uh, because it's not that tall of a tunnel on the, on the ladders, we can reach it and pull it over the top and just clamp as we go and take our time. As I said before, it's not very windy today, so let's do this. All right, so we're just working it across here. And again, it's a short tunnel, so you can see Gene's just like pulling both sections together up to the, a higher spot and then clamping them. And you can see we've already done that down here. So we're just gonna go back and forth a few times so we can get it over the top. But again, not too hard. I'm gonna go help Gene out with this. So 
So just moving it a little bit at a time, clamping it, going back and forth. Just keeping these two edges together so we're moving both pieces of plastic. That's about it. Definitely have the pieces of plastic now over the peak and starting to pull it down the other side. What happens at this point is that there's a lot more friction on this side as you're trying to pull. So I'm pulling down while Dean's sort of like pushing it up and uh, just trying to get the plastic to go up and over. All right, so I'm on the bottom side here. We're getting the plastic over. Just being patient with it, going little by little. You can see it's almost down here. And again, just pulling a little bit at a time. Well, Gene kind of pushes it up and over. We'll deal with the ends in a little bit. Bunch of finagling here and there, but again, taking our time and just moving it little by little. We got it pretty much square over the tunnel now, both layers. And because it's not windy, we're not stressing about it. <laughs> but after we got that all squared up, put a piece of wiggle wire uh, in the just over the ridge here, just one piece to secure the, the ridge of both pieces of plastic. Then we're gonna go down the other side and do pull it tight and put the do the same thing on the peak there. And that'll sort of secure it just to keep it from moving. And then after that, we'll go down to the middle on the sides, pin that in, and then just work our way towards the, uh, to the end walls. And over here, we're gonna have to uh, do it a little bit differently just because we're gonna have to get that blower installed. So we'll probably peel up the second layer, put a hole in, put that piece in and then secure both pieces of plastic at the same time. So that's what we're gonna do. Got most of the wiggle wire in along the bottom, except for kind of over here. And you have to keep in mind that with a double walled tunnel like this, you wanna make sure that you don't pull it super tight because if you pull it really tight, the plastic will get really close together. And then when you run the blower to try to inflate the two layers to keep a space in there for insulation, you won't have enough uh, room in there because it'll be so tight together. So we're not pulling it super tight. And we're about to put the piece in for the blower motor here. And to do that, as I showed you on the inside, this is a blower motor and we've got to cut a hole through this plastic here and then pop this little piece in and this will sort of keep that distance between the two layers and then we can tighten everything down at the bottom here. Well, I pushed through and got all the plastic tidied up, even got all the trimming done around the, uh, the edges and the bottom. The only thing that we didn't do was uh, deal with the plastic at the bottom, at the ground here on the end walls and I have to trim that and then we're going to bury it at least, a, at least like a foot or so in the ground. So it makes a nice tight seal against the ground. That's what they recommend in the instructions. Otherwise, big push and got this done. Only things really left in here, we gotta get all the uh, electrical and all the, me the mechanical stuff inside, like the louvers and the fans and the blower, and get all that wired up and hooked up and then smooth out the ground a little bit and cover it and then get some tables in here and we'll be good to go, start growing. And I'm really, really excited. This has been a big project and I'm, like, I know it was supposed to be a lot of hours, but I'm just, I'm, I don't know. It just kind of adds up and I'm kind of surprised in some ways, even though I, I knew what I was getting into, but really happy with this. I think it's gonna be a huge addition to the farm here. And uh, yeah, overall really happy with the way it's coming out. So I know there's been a lot of videos about this greenhouse build, but hey, that's what's been going on here. And I think if you're interested in something like this, this will give you some good insight. So hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit subscribe if you're not already, and we'll see you in the next one.